Welcome back to Kona. Well, I don't think there's that much more I can do at the general store at the moment. I can't get the generator up and going because I don't have the right supplies. I can't get into this building because I don't have the key. So, I think what I'm going to do is follow the tracks which go south. And according to the map, will lead to some sort of a building. I should probably have my pistol out as well. I love how there's no crosshair and it, like, sways so much. Feels like how it should be. Because, like, I might be a detective, right? But, like, <laughs> I'm not an assassin or something. It's not like I have much, if any, experience with firearms. Detectives aren't usually, like, on the front lines. Oh, is that a frozen body? Standing up? Yeah, detectives don't usually get shot at. Waiting to see more special tracks. Yep. Whoa. Carl wondered what the hell could that thing be? It looked like a man fossilized in ice. Yeah! No kidding! I swear, are, did the audio options change? No, it's still set to important only. Apparently that was important. Alright. No wolf could have done that. Yeah, the front of it is completely... bent and broken. Oh, Jesus. Looking at it hurts my head, apparently. Oof. Oh, is that actually hurting... is that hurting my mental state? It probably is. All of a sudden, Carl felt like he was pulled inside a world of dreams. A cold, unknown dimension. Somehow, self-control was slipping from his grasp. Mysterious Journal, page 1. The beast enjoys long slumbers. Its sanctuary seems impregnable. Impregnable. Ice is everywhere. I need to exercise patience and wait for it to come out, to think like a hunter. The beast often invades the settlements, bordering the lake. It terrorizes the white people. They never see it coming, but they feel its presence. A cold dread grabbing at your innards. The beast excites the wolves. Makes them more aggressive. When attacked me, I had to cut its throat. The blade digging into its flesh made the sound of a taut wire. The beast is getting closer to the villagers. It moves at night, bringing heavy snow and strong gusts of wind along with it. I tracked it to no avail. I do not know the white man frozen in ice, but I do know this. It is the work of the beast. Its attacks curdle the blood of its victims. White men know nothing of this force of nature. I touched the ice, imprisoning the white man. I saw things, but I do not understand them. So, I'm assuming this was written by a Native American. One of the Cree people, probably? Seven, three, nine. Suddenly appeared before Carl. From what they said in the journal, it sounds like the wolves are not normally this aggressive, but it's the beast that's making them so.
Carl had that feeling you get when you immerse your frozen hands in hot water. What happened? Now at least he knew who the unfortunate man petrified in ice was. Gilles Lachance, the general store's manager himself. I think I was pronouncing it Gillis, so it's Gilles or something like that. So hold on, where am I on the map? Like, I still haven't actually been to the building over there, right? That campfire is marked now, which must be the one that I saw in the vision, but... I definitely didn't get to any building. Or is there something more in here? That had to be the worst parking job ever. Who was Carl to judge, though? It may be customary to park like that around these parts, or not. That is apparently considered necessary dialogue. What's even the point of that option in the audio menu? Would it be mean if I went into the game's files and, like, tried to see if I could rip out every single one that had voices in it? So, should I just... Run for the building, I guess? Oh yeah, I think I'm gonna. I can actually see the person inside of it. Through the- oh god. Jesus. There wouldn't be any point in, like, trying to sh- like, shoot it to, like, break the ice or something, would there? Nah, I don't think so. way to do a loading screen. I've never seen it done like that before. Like, the world still exists and you can still move your character, like, your view, but you can't actually move in the world. You just rotate. You just look around. Jesus. Someone else. prints around that one. Okay, how am I doing? Uh, pretty low on heat. Not super low, but pretty low. I'm definitely going to be in trouble if the front door is locked. Okay. Whew. It's not. Ah, that, that like icy, shiny, crystally effect is so cool. These games are really good looking. fire going. Oh, I need wood. Oh, there's some right here. <laughs> oh, well. <sighs> Alright, we better get that over with so I stop hurting my brain. The otherworldly ice had struck again. The woman's hopes and dreams were frozen in eternity. Something was hidden under the stairs. Between the crystally look on the window and those things outside, it just looks like stars. Almost like we're in space. Nothing 
something useful here. Seemed like secrecy was commonplace in this house. The vision's veil was lifted, and he was back to reality. A reality in which Giselle, Jill's loving spouse, was motionless, frozen in ice. Giselle's Diary, page 1, September. Mother once told me when I first met... I already forgot how to pronounce his name. Gilles? I think so. That I hadn't picked the brightest bulb of the lot. And as the years fly by, I'm seeing the truth of her words. Always trust your mother's wisdom. <laughs> and apparently they were not too smart. That blackmailing scheme is a prime example of, of Gilles' brightness. He's like a small dog. He thinks he's bigger than he actually is. He growls, genuinely thinking he's scary, but everyone knows he can be pushed aside with just a little kick. He truly believes he can blackmail Hamilton. The big boss himself. It's going to be a long time in hell before my poor Gilles can manage to pull off such a feat. After all, Hamilton's rich, learned, and influential man. Not only is that blackmailing idea bad to begin with, let's be honest, Jills is way out of his league, but Jills doesn't even know how he's actually going to carry this out. I don't even think he ever would. He's just throwing random threats out loud in the kitchen. He says he'll do it eventually, but I know better. Successful blackmailing requires masterful cunning, and Giles is a master of nothing. He is a slave, and forever will be. I often look at that safe he keeps hidden in the fake wall in which he stores all these incriminating documents he intends to use. And I just can't come to grips with the sheer ridiculousness of the whole thing. Oh, there's more. It is true that Hamilton would still have to figure out the combination of the safe where everything is hidden. Only problem is, Gilles himself tends to forget the combination. He has a trick to help him remember. His father's first initial followed by three numbers I had to engrave behind his pendant. Who could possibly have a hard time remembering three simple numbers but my Gilles? Hmm, father's first initial, and then the three things that I've found on that pendant. October, Gilles has trouble sleeping. He'll flail his arms and legs in his sleep. I told him this blackmail business would be hard on him, but that's the problem with idiots. They always think they're the smartest person around, no matter how hard you try to shake them. Hamilton will find out. And then we're done for. We'll have to move to Valdor and live with the small fry. I'm shaking as I'm writing this. I cannot believe I have taken part in this tragedy. I haven't done anything. Why do I feel so guilty? Poor girl. She was so young. Poor girl. What girl? So, it sounds like something went wrong with the blackmail. Unintended consequences. Looks like they were repainting the whole house. Oh. I've got a water bottle now that I just filled up my empty bottle. That's cool. The toilet is not flushable. Hmm. The unpacked boxes suggest they just moved here. Painkiller. Oh. Kitty. Gonna leave all that stuff open so that I know I already searched it. place actually has power. Nice. Oh wow. Yeah, that's a lot better than using a flashlight. Still though, the lighting in this main room is just sad. There's only these two lights by the fireplace and that's it. Jeez. 
Wow, I can actually open like every single drawer. Pure cane sugar. Caribbean snow. <laughs> Lines cut, of course. That looks delicious. Even the curtains are frozen. Wow. I've yet to find a clock that works. Hmm. That's right, the clock at the general store had stopped too. I wonder if that's a side effect of... The Beast. I didn't realize this game would be so supernatural, but it sounds like... Supernatural is actually a big part of it. Looks like the holes in that puzzle are there to stay. The pot was cold, and the stew inside wasn't cooked. It's likely that poor Giselle was slow cooking it before she got snapped. What a waste. Hmm. I wonder if I can toss this the steak as maybe a distraction for the wolves. Ah, moving. What a pleasant activity. Of course, you'll find the record player only to find the records weeks later in some random box. With everything Carl says, I more and more Many want to... boxes scattered about. Carl didn't need to summon his detective training to quickly figure that the Lachances had just moved in. I want to rip out every audio file in this game. Chez Lachance. Changes hands. Founded by Bertrand Lachance. Okay, so B would be the first initial. Of their father. Founded by Bertrand Lachance more than 20 years ago, the general store, better known as Chez Lachance, is one of Monistan's economic mainstays. Since the passing of its aged owner, however, business wasn't as booming as it once was. Giles Lachance, or Gil, Gil, ah, I keep forgetting, inheritor of the humble establishment, had no choice but to sell everything to William Hamilton, the rich and famous businessman who sparked a major controversy last year when he announced the reopening and expansion of his copper mine. As of now, operations at the general store are expected to remain unchanged despite the change of hands. Giles Lachance still helms the register. It felt like old people were all these walls could see for years. The Lachances could hardly be blamed for wanting to freshen things up a bit. Like... <sighs> I think the problem is more than just that the narrator talks too much. I don't think that's necessarily the problem. It's just that I want them to talk less because the writing for the narrator is just really cheesy. I think it's the writing more than anything. Whoa. Well, I guess if I didn't find it from the newspaper, I'd get it from there. 1948. Carl had seen that kind of safe before. With its double-layered security system blending letters and numbers, its code couldn't be broken by the common burglar. I've never seen a safe like that. It's interesting. Okay, what were the numbers? So B739. Oh, wait. How? Hmm. I don't know if I need to validate. Press E to validate. Do I need to, like, press when I get to the 7? Alright, well, that worked. Compromising file. 
William Hamilton is a crook. He's been blackmailing everyone in the village, myself included. Like the infamous Seraphin Pordrayer. I'm sorry, I'm going to totally butcher these names. In this document is proof of every bribe paid by Hamilton to the federal authorities in regards to the acquisition of his damn mine. The fact that he has used his henchmen to instill terror within the village will not sway the tribunals down in Montreal. But the fact that he has been bribing government officials surely will. I can already picture it making the front page. The English are all the same. We will prevail. And then written with different ink. Hamilton is not only a crook, but a murderer. I do not believe in his remorse. I firmly believe he will pay for his crime. I do not believe in native magic, but I do believe in their vengeance. Yeah, there's like a photograph. Huh. I'm guessing... Well, it's probably William Hamilton on the left, right? Or, I guess, on the top from this perspective. But the other person is probably the one that we have a photo of, no? I mean, it's hard to tell, but it kind of looks like they're wearing similar things, and I guess the hair matches. It definitely could be them. Oh, that reminds me. Yeah, we have this book of, like, case notes that I've never looked at. Let's do that. Investigation, case of vandalism, meeting at general store tomorrow. Uh, oh. So, like, this is the... This is the main directory, and then it takes me to the subdirectory, I guess? Biography on everybody. J. Hamilton. Oh, there's all the pictures that I've kept. Hmm. Haven't I kept more pictures than this, though? Surely I've kept more than two. Yeah, so most of this I'm not terribly interested in reading. A lot of it's kind of obvious, or I've already kind of figured out. Like, for example, the person that uh, almost hit me in the car. That crash car that I got the medical box out of the back of. That was probably the person fleeing from having just murdered Hamilton. Uh, but yeah, there's like each individual case, and then you can see spots where notes and clues would go if I have found them, which I haven't for a lot of these. Uh, one that I do want to read, though, is Hamilton's murder, because there's some hypothesis stuff here. Uh, an envelope torn open, dressed to the Secret Service, if I remember correctly. This whole thing is more intricate than it seems. Is getting rid of the murder weapon by putting it in a mailbox really the best way? There most likely won't be any prints on it. I would have paid to see the postman's face when he found the thing, though. Another envelope, addressed to... Vo? From the Secret Service. There's a key inside. The killer must not have known it was there, or they would have taken it. I'm one step ahead of them. Hypothesis. I can easily trace back the chain of events. Hamilton wants to send a very confidential denunciation letter to the Secret Service in Ottawa. He's planning on sending the letter inside of a locked box, and to send the key separately. It's cumbersome, but he's doing what he can. But something throws him off while he's in a hurry. He locks everything and mails the key, but the box somehow ends up in his killer's hands. Yeah. Giles Lachance went to the doctors. Now I need to know if the doctor saw Giles. I know how to lead the perfect investigation? What? Why are you talking yourself up in your own case notes? Alright, I think that's good. And yeah, about the doctor. They are actually marked on the map. Yeah, doctor over there. Pretty close, too. Definitely, well, yeah, actually, they're definitely within walking distance. Alright, let's check upstairs. Many boxes scattered about. Carl didn't need to summon his detective training to quickly figure that the Lachances had just moved in. Ooh, ten more Polaroid films. Okay, so you can find more. Cool. Alright, I don't think there's any point in looking at boxes and stuff. I think they're just going to say they were moving. Yes. Box full of Harlequin novels. I don't know what a Harlequin is. Beautiful portrait of Gilles and Giselle. Bound together by the chains of conventional love. I 
think that's it for this place. Jesus, for a second I thought that was like a screaming creature. Just a howling wind. How am I doing on wood? Got two pieces. Okay, that's fine. Just want to make sure I have at least one piece. See if there's anything else on this property. I feel like I should take a picture. There, I had to reorganize my hotkeys because I unassigned my camera. This is a disturbing picture. Just frozen in fear. Literally frozen in fear. Magnet. Huh. Interesting. No clue what I'm gonna use that for. What the hell? The crossbow bolt stuck into the wooden stairs reminded Carl of the arrow that was said to have hit Achilles heel. But who was the intended Achilles this time? It's like a fire arrow. Somehow still red hot. Or orange hot at least. Alright, where are we exactly? Are we on the main road now? Eh, almost. Oh, <laughs> there's my steak. Yeah, so I can toss it, so it probably is for the wolves. Let's run back. Got a feeling I'm gonna encounter the wolves on the way back. How am I doing on heat? Eh, not bad. I'll make it back. I love the atmosphere out here. entire place changed so violently just in a couple hours after crashing my car. Before the blizzard. I mean, before the crash. There was no blizzard. Well, I still don't have the key to this building, so... I guess I gotta go to the doctor. Alright, well, I think I'm gonna save that for the next episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm gonna run over to the doctor's place.